Oh, hi, and welcome to another program of That's English. Oh, hi, everyone. Today's program is about intelligence. And if I can complete this Rubik's Cube, then that proves I'm very intelligent. I was never good at the Rubik's Cube. It's too complicated, mind-bending, in fact. We'll leave you to it. In today's episode, we meet Adrian and his daughter, Rosie, who seems to be having some problems at school. While you watch, answer the question. Why is Adrian worried about Rosie? Oh, morning, Adrian. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Karen. Come on, Rosie. I'm going to be late for work if she doesn't get a move on. School will be over by the time you get there. What's she doing? Oh, she loves taking photos. She'd rather do that than go to school. Oh, don't remind me. I went through a phase of not wanting to go to school. She never wants to go lately. I don't think she likes school at all. Hmm. There must be something wrong. Yes. I even had to go in last week to talk to the teacher. She says that Rosie is not participating in class and doesn't pay attention. And what about her schoolwork? Well, the teacher says it's not very good. She believes that Rosie may well have learning difficulties. <laughs> but she's quite bright, isn't she? I think she's rather clever, but then I'm her father. Yeah. I just don't know why she's not doing well at school. It must be worrying. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about the future, too. By the time she gets to secondary school, she'll have fallen so far behind, it'll be difficult to catch up. Hi, Rosie. Let's have a look. Oh, that's really good. I never noticed that before. Is this for a school project? No. I hate school. It's boring. I'm going to get you to do stage five by yourself. Rosie! I'm only taking notes, Mrs Bentley. I wasn't born yesterday, Rosie Pritchard. You're not listening. Again. You'll get a detention next time. I'm always getting told off. I don't want to go! I really don't know how to help her. It reminds me of when I was at school. I kept being told off for not paying attention. The mess made in the 20th century. Can't you read the title, Karen Jones? It says the mass media in the 20th century. I was really humiliated. And I was right, as I recall. There was a mess made in the 20th century. <laughs> it turned out I had moderate dyslexia. My parents got in contact with a special needs teacher and she helped me a lot. Have you considered looking for professional advice? Oh, I don't know where to start. My friend Laura is an educational psychologist. She does private assessments. I'll be seeing her at the weekend. I'll pick her brains. Would you? I'll be away next week, but I'm back on Wednesday. Perhaps I can meet her. OK. I'll email you her details. I've got to go. My meeting starts in half an hour. Rosie, come on, love. Everything's going to be all right. So Karen had dyslexia when she was younger and had help from a special needs teacher. Finished! Oh, well done! Now, did you answer the question? Why is Adrian worried about Rosie? I even had to go in last week to talk to the teacher. She says that Rosie's not participating in class and doesn't pay attention. And what about her schoolwork? Well, the teacher says it's not very good. She believes that Rosie may well have learning difficulties. Adrian is worried about Rosie because she's not participating in class, doesn't pay attention, and the teacher thinks she might have learning difficulties. In the video, we heard people emphasising using the words even, just and only. Watch. I even had to go in last week to talk to the teacher. I just don't know why she's not doing well at school. I'm only taking notes, Mrs Bentley. So were you a good pupil when you were at school, Sam? I was only top of the class for five years in a row. Oh, that's just brilliant. I knew you were clever. What about you? Well, 
I wasn't bad. I even won a school prize once for art. In part two of the video, Laura, the psychologist, gives Rosie an IQ test. As you watch, think about this question. What possible reason does Laura give for Rosie's poor results at school? Have a look at these puzzles if you want. I'm just going to talk to your dad. The Chinese puzzle is an excellent way of analysing a student's ability to solve problems. Puzzles develop their skills in recognising patterns. Some of them look mind-bending. Uh, Rosie loves puzzles. She's bound to be able to solve them. What parents observe is important in these cases. She's a smart kid, as bright as a button. Why isn't she getting good results at school? There could be many reasons. If children aren't motivated, they're more likely to underperform. First, we have to try and evaluate Rosie's intelligence. How do we do that? We measure her intelligence quotient. You mean an IQ test? Yes, although some doubt has been cast over the accuracy of the IQ test because it's unlikely to assess the performance of children in all areas. What other tests are there? Most educators also use multiple intelligence tests on the grounds that there are different intelligences. Traditional tests only focus on verbal and mathematical skills. It sounds complicated. I'm not trying to blind you with science, but users of the multiple intelligence theory have been claiming the benefits for years. I'm trying to make sense of it all. These are the different intelligences. Linguistic. Logical. Visual-spatial. What's visual-spatial intelligence? It's the capacity to understand the world visually. Rosie likes taking photos. This may well be her strongest intelligence. And this will be illustrated in these tests. It's difficult to predict the outcome of the tests. We also need to analyse her past results and consider observations from parents and teachers. So, what's next? The procedure starts with the IQ test and then some multiple intelligence tests and then I'll be talking to the school. Shall we see how Rosie's doing? Things look promising. The results of these tests are going to be very interesting. Good morning, Rosie. Adrian? I'm going to be late for school if he doesn't hurry up. Come on, Dad, you'll be late for work. <laughs> this is a surprise. What's the rush? I've got to download some pictures for my journal. I'm handing it in today. See the difference? Thanks to Laura, Rosie's been identified as not just above average intelligence, but exceptionally gifted. They've set up a programme for gifted children at school. In fact, Rosie's won a prize for her ancient history project. Oh, that's great. The museum is exhibiting the winning projects. They're even having a special lunch for us. Oh, congratulations. I'd love to write an article for the paper about Rosie. Will you put my picture in the paper? Rosie is like a different child. She's really motivated now. Yes, she's even won a prize for her history project. We asked you the following question. What possible reason does Laura give for Rosie's poor results at school? Why isn't she getting good results at school? There could be many reasons. If children aren't motivated, they're more likely to underperform. So a possible reason could be a lack of motivation, which means Rosie might not be doing as well as she could. Laura also talked about different types of intelligence. Rosie has strong visual intelligence, and now she's being encouraged to use it. In the video, Laura and Adrian were making predictions. Uh, Rosie loves puzzles. She's bound to be able to solve them. 
some doubt has been cast over the accuracy of the IQ test because it's unlikely to assess the performance of children in all areas. When we make predictions, we can use expressions like bound to, unlikely and likely. Children are likely to succeed if they enjoy what they learn. And they're bound to be better at some subjects than others. Did you notice the different expressions people use to talk about intelligence? She's a smart kid, as bright as a button. Rosie's been identified as not just above average intelligence, but exceptionally gifted. I'm not trying to blind you with science. I'm trying to make sense of it all. There are many different ways to call someone clever, such as smart, bright and gifted. When we talk about blinding someone with something, it means we are making it very complicated for them. I saw my lawyer and she blinded me with legal terms. Now, let's head over to the USA to hear from people in the street. We asked them, can you tell us about a time when you acted intelligently or wish you had? I think every day I do something really clever, to be honest. Working. Going to work, getting up, doing what you're supposed to do every day. Maybe when I decided to move to this country years ago. I went ahead and retired early from my job and I sensed something coming down the pike and uh, luckily I was able to get out when I needed to go. I guess something very intelligent, we graduate from college. What if I ever acted intelligently all the time? Um, well, we all go to school at Georgia State, so I think we all act intelligently every day. Especially when we're doing an interview for a job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at work. I, I work in IT, so you get certain situations where not everyone's experienced it, and you have to try to figure out ways to fix it on the spot. So, every day. Every day of my life. It's happening right now, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm behaving very intelligently this time around because this is my, I think, third or fourth time in Miami. And I vowed to myself that if I come back here, I'll be, I'll follow a straight, uh, straight edge and not, you know, party too much and things like that. So I'm being smart right now and I'm being intelligent. So I'm very proud of that. Yes. I have a bit of a temper and that tends to um, cause much problems for me. Just recently I got into a fight and uh, had have been kicked out of school, so I wish I had been more intelligent then. Tieno talked about following the straight edge, which means he is behaving sensibly. Cheryl talked about sensing something coming down the pike. This is an old expression, which means she could predict something that was about to happen. OK, Samantha, I'm going to give it a go. Well, that's it for today's programme, but we may be here for some time. Huh. See you. Thank <laughs> you.